Welcome to Oathbreaking News, brought to you by the Signature Spell Bomb. On today's show, we will be discussing the April 27th ban announcement, the Aquaria release, and the Commander 2020 release and their effects on the Magic community and the format in general. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do, please like, share, and subscribe to help the channel. Starting off, this channel is only a few weeks old, so we are going to be covering some more recent events. The Oathbreaker Rules Committee posted a release on April 27th of this year that underlined the following items that have been tested since the last banned and restricted announcement. The potential banning of Dark Ritual, and testing to unban Painter Servant, Sylvan Primordial, and Grizzlebran. The results of the testing was that Dark Ritual is now banned, and the rest of the tested cards will be remaining on the banned list at this time. The Rules Committee stated, The testing for Dark Ritual led to games that were non-interactive in the banning announcement. They cited that it leads to unfair advantage with Liliana of the Veil vale and Smallpox as the signature spell, as well as decks that are running the three mana cost Ashiok Dream Render. For full information on the change, we'll post a link to the announcement in the description. At this time, it seems that all of these choices were made for the health of the format. The next ban announcement is scheduled to come out on July 10th. In this ban announcement, they will be testing Green Ramp and to see if it has any negative effects on the format, the card advantage of Gifts Ungiven, and the new Ikoria set that was just released. Speaking of our Ikoria, in our next topic, we'll be discussing the Ikoria release that occurred yesterday, 5-15-2020, and its effects on the format. Ikoria has the following focuses that could change our format. Keyword counters, mutate, cycling, companions, and we are getting three new Oathbreakers. Keyword counters are a welcome addition to the game, as they will take evergreen keywords like First Strike, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and give us a way to track the permanent changes to our creatures and their abilities more easily. There is a hidden cost of needing to buy tokens, as sites like Etsy try to fill the demand by creating new counters for these keyword counters that can be purchased online. There are also unintended side effects of this change that will most likely affect eternal formats, including Legacy, Modern, EDH, and even our own format, Oathbreaker. This uninterred consequence is that many cards that mention counters will need to be reevaluated as they will be able to change or remove these new counters. On a side note, it is this reporter's personal opinion that the ability keyword counters that provide permanent changes to creatures undermine aura enchantments and will most likely weaken auras as a card type. I believe this is also true for abilities like Bestow, Mutate, and Equipment. The new keyword ability of the set, Mutate, is essentially kind of like Bestow with the following changes. A creature that is mutating is either placed on top of or below the card it's mutating. In the event that it's placed below, it acts kind of like an enchantment giving the creature on top all of its abilities. If it's placed on top, its power, types, and toughness override the top creature, but it will maintain the creature's abilities that are below it. When the top creature on the stack would leave, all other creatures um, that are part of this new mutated creature will go to the same zone. So if a creature would be destroyed to go to the graveyard, all of the cards that are part of the mutated creature will go there, and if it would be removed from the game, the same is true. Note, playing a spell for its mutate cost is a cast trigger, but the act of mutating a, a creature only changes the creature that's mutating. It does not trigger any enter the battlefield effects. Many of these new mutate creatures have a constellation-like effect that triggers when the creature mutates. This is often restricted um, due to the fact that it's only when the creature it's on mutates rather than any creature entering play. Hopefully because of this it'll be a little bit more balanced, but only time will tell. The next mechanic coming to us out of Ikoria is a returning mechanic. Cycling is a welcomed return as it can smooth out our card draw and it can help us hunt for what we need. As per the usual, they have printed a suite of cards that reduce cycling costs or that trigger when we cycle. This would provide us with some value for cycling beyond just spending to discard and draw. Cycling also is used frequently in combo decks and combo strategies, so it'll be interesting to see what players build with these new mechanics. 
Companions are a new creature that affect the way we construct our deck in exchange for the ability to cast them from outside the game once per game. We can only choose one creature to be our companion, and each companion has a different deck building restriction. Companions can offer fun and challenging deck construction through the restriction it places on the constructor. However, companions have been available per for play in Arena for quite some time, and this has been causing problems. I have been watching the reddits and there have been negative effects on many players gameplay experience due to companions. Back on April 9th, the Oathbreak Rules Committee decided that they will not be making any changes to the rules to provide for sideboards or be making accommodations for companions. I will provide a link to this announcement in the description. At this time, it is this channel's decision that we will not be using companions in any deck text that we make for the channel. And this is just to stay in line with the Oathbreaker Rules Committee's ruling on this issue. The last topic I'd like to discuss, as far as Coria's release goes, is we'll be getting three new commanders in this set. We'll be getting Luca, Copper Core Outcast, Vivian, Monster's Advocate, and Narset of the Ancient Ways. Our set of the Ancient Ways is a welcomed addition as we now have our first Jeskai commander. Luca and Vivian also provide some very interesting deck creation. Vivian is especially interesting to me because she has a returning mechanic of a static ability that we haven't seen on the Planeswalker since War of the Spark. Moving on, let's discuss Commander 2020, also known as Ikoria Commander, that was also released on May 15th, 2020. This deck will contain quite a few Commander reprints. We're going to be getting reprints of Jace, Architect of Thought, Chandra the Flamecaller, Ajani Unyielding, Nahiri the Harbringer, and Nissa Steward of Elements. Some of these commanders are a little bit on the expensive side, so this should help make these Oathbreaker decks a little bit more affordable for some players. Commander sets are generally good for the EDH and Commander format, and the same is true for Oathbreaker formats as well, as cards that will affect Commander color identity, cost, or mana restrictions are often useful to us. These decks contain many reprints that we can use, and some rare-to-find oddities. I will certainly be picking up a few of these decks myself. If you want to know more about the cards in Ikoria and the cards in Ikoria Commander, I will be posting links in the description for the full sets, and I will be posting the document for their releases in the description as well. Now that we have provided information and our opinion on these news topics, give us your thoughts. We want to hear what you think about this episode and of the channel in the comments below. If you enjoy this video and want to support the channel, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can be the first to see our new Oath-Breaking News videos. We have merchandise. If you want to show your support, please see the link in description. And if you want to support this channel directly, please consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash signature spellbomb. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I hope to see you in the headlines.